Hi all. In this video we will talk about the GMAT scoring. Let's take a brief look at what all you will be seeing in this video. GMAT score has parts to it which we will discuss in detail. Then we'll take a look at how these scores are determined and the factors that affect them. Also we'll look at the GMAT total score, how is it calculated and what it depends upon. And finally we will look at the recent GMAT percentage. The GMAT exam consists of four sections. AWA which has one essay question and has to be completed in 30 minutes. IR or integrated reasoning which consists of 12 questions based on tabular and graphical data. It has to be completed in 30 minutes. Quantitative reasoning which consists of 31 questions based on a high school math which are to be completed in 62 minutes. Verbal reasoning section which consists of 36 questions has to be completed in 65 minutes. You can select the order in which you want to attempt these sections. You can choose from three options. First, AWA, then IR, then Quant, and then Verbal. You can start with Quant, then Verbal, IR, and AWA, or you can start with Verbal, Quant, IR, and then AWA. You should be clear about which order you want before you sit for the actual exam. Experiment with different orders in your full length mock tests and see which one works best for you. Remember, only quant and verbal contribute towards your total score. So keep in mind that you need to be at your maximum efficiency and focus when you are attempting these sections. AWA is scored on a scale of 0 to 6 with intervals of 0.5, meaning scores are given as 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5 and so on. A score of 5 or above is a very good score in this section and the average score is 4.44. IR section is scored on a scale of 1 to 8 with intervals of 1. A score of 6 or above is a very good score in this section. Average score in this section is 4.23. Quant section is scored on a scale of 0 to 60 with intervals of 1. Average score in this section is 39.4. Verbal section is also scored on a scale of 0 to 60 with intervals of 1. Average score in this section is around 26.86. Scores of less than 6 and more than 51 are very rare on both quant and verbal. Total score is scored on a scale of 200 to 800 with intervals of 10. Average score in this section is 563. Now let's take a look at these sections individually and see what factors come into play when they are scored. Your scores in quant and verbal sections depend primarily on four factors. First, number of questions you answer, number of questions you do not answer. Remember the fact that not completing a section is heavily penalized by GMAT. So take a calculated guess instead of skipping a question. Then, for whether your answers are correct and the last one where things become a little tricky is the difficulty level of the questions that the test gives you. Remember, GMAT is a computer adaptive test which means that the difficulty level of the questions is determined by your response to the previous questions. GMAT allocates a difficulty coefficient to each question and you are scored according to that. More difficult questions answered correctly lead to a higher score. Let's take a look at that in detail. GMAT is constantly assessing your ability level. The quant and verbal sections, which are computer adaptive sections, start with the question of medium difficulty level. Then as you go along the test, computer gives you harder or easier questions based on your ability that it has gauged. If your answer is correct, you can expect the next question to be harder and if your answer is incorrect, you can expect the next question to be easier. Other than difficulty, GMAT ensures that all test forms taken by multiple test takers are equivalent in terms of test content, length, etc. Also no questions that have already been asked in the history of GMAT are repeated. 
you will not get any question that has already been asked in the GVAP. As I said earlier, your score in quant and verbal depend on the difficulty level of questions you answered correctly. More correct responses mean more difficult questions and hence a higher score. Remember, answering too many questions wrong in a row will reduce the difficulty level of the test. This leads to a low score in the end. GMAT is very good at assessing your ability. It tracks your guessing pattern and marks such correct answers as false positives. Let us take a look at how they do that. I will try to simplify the complex mathematical algorithm that GMAT uses by this table. Here we will look at the responses of four test takers to five questions of different difficulty level. Zero means an incorrect response and one means a correct response. Let's compare the responses of test taker one and two. Test taker two answered two easy questions correctly and got the rest of them wrong. While test taker one answered the easiest question correctly, answered easy and medium difficulty level question incorrectly, answered a hard question correctly and answered the hardest question incorrectly. The algorithm decides that the test taker 2 is not guessing, but the test taker 1 is guessing. Because it is very unlikely that the person who got a difficult question right would get two relatively easier questions wrong. So what do you do when you run out of time in the exam and have a few questions left? We have observed that omitting the question can prove to be more harmful than guessing blindly. GMAT wants you to complete the section. Let's say the person is scoring high in quant section and guesses the last five questions wrong. The drop in the score will be lower than in case of omitting the questions. If a person was scoring 46, the score will be dropped to 45 in case of guessing wrong. But if the questions are omitted, the drop will take the score to 42. There is not much of a difference in the two cases when the test taker is already scoring low. It is not known how the GMAT algorithm works to calculate the total score. But through historical data, we can estimate the total score based on quant and verbal scores. Keep in mind that this is just an estimate to get an idea of what total score you can expect based on quant and verbal scores. Actual scores may vary. This chart compares various sectional score combinations to arrive at an approximate total score. If you get 46 in verbal and 44 in quant, you will approximately get a total score of 730. Notice that there are many 730s in the chart. This is where this chart becomes most useful. You can be better at verbal than in quant. You can use this chart to find the best combination of two sectional scores, which you can achieve to reach your target score. In AWA section, you will be presented with an argument on which you have to write an essay, analyzing how well reasoned is the argument. Unlike other scores, you will not get your AWA scores immediately after finishing the test as the test is once graded by a computer algorithm and once by a human expert which takes time. The final score will be the average of two graders. You will see your AWA scores and the official GMAT scorecard which can take up to 20 days to come after the test. If it is found that there is a significant difference in human score and computer score, the essay is again evaluated for the third time by a human expert. Now let's move forward to the integrated reasoning section. Integrated reasoning section asks you multiple choice questions which have to be answered based on your analysis of the tables, charts, graphs, etc. given in the question. Many questions have more than one sub-questions in them. If you fail to answer even one of the sub-question correctly, you get marked zero for the complete question. Let me take help of the sample question to explain to you what this means. Say you answer first and second part correctly, but you get the third part wrong. 
it will lead to no score for this complete question. Finally, your total score converts to a percentile rank. What your GMAT percentile means is the percentage of people that have done worse than you in the test. If you are at a 75th percentile position, this means that 75% of people have gotten lesser total score than you in the last three years. This chart compares different GMAT scores to a percentile rank. A score of 750 will take you to the 98th percentile, which is a very good place to be. To wrap up, let's look at key points around GMAT score. So remember, it's either everything or nothing on IR section. We have to get all sub questions right in order to get a point. Quant and verbal sections are computer adaptive. Computer gives you more difficult question if you get a question right and vice versa to accurately measure your ability. The GMAT total score of 800 is based on your performance in quant and verbal sections only. AWA and IR section are independent sections and are scored independently. AWA and IR scores matter. One should not take AWA and IR scores lightly, as most of the universities look for a minimum score of 4 or more on these sections. Good news that Career Launcher is there to help you prepare for GMAT, and our experts will equip you with all the tools to do well on the test. To know more, please log on to careerlauncher.com GMAT or click on the link provided in the description below. Thanks for watching.